Welcome right. to the new episode of Green Gardens. I am Aishu Bhardwaj and in, in today's episode, we are going to throw light on one of the trendiest topics of today, that is green hydrogen. And to give you all a clear picture of the same, we have with us Mr. Prasanta Sarkar, co-founder and CEO of New Trace. Welcome, Mr. Sarkar. And I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Aishu, for inviting me to the show. Same here, sir. It's our pleasure to uh, welcome you on our series. And without taking much of your time, I will take our audience to your inspiring story. But before we hop on to the techn technicalities of green hydrogen, let's talk about new trays. So what inspired you to establish new trays and how did the idea for the revolutionary electrolyzer technology came about? Sure. Uh, I think a lot of it has been uh, based on uh, the background of Nutris founder. Uh, so, Rochan and I, we started a company back in 2021 uh, and we were uh, back in India after close to a decade each in Europe. Uh, and I think in general, we were much more aware about uh, climate change and how we have to address it now and not a decade later. Uh, and we felt like uh, India was a uh, 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 at the right opportunity to kind of build solutions to address climate change. Uh, we also wanted to build something that has an impact on people's life, direct or indirect. And we thought that uh, and energy security is going to be very essential for an uh, equitable and fair uh, development of the society. Uh, we looked into the whole uh, changing climate and emission spectrum and we realized that uh, there were not much solutions which were available for the large-scale industry to decarbonize their process. Exactly. Uh, a lot of focus was there on only on electric vehicle, but the mm -hmm. majority of the uh, emissions and climate change is being driven by the emissions from the large-scale industries who are not getting enough solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and we felt like uh, green hydrogen has a uh, play in it. Uh, and there were not enough uh, technology that could uh, bring down the cost of producing the green hydrogen. So that's when we decided to stay back in India and uh, build something up here in the thriving startup ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, make sure that uh, we enable the whole... Uh, transition of the industrial and mobility sector towards using cleaner, greener fuels. All right, sir. Moving on to our next question. Could you uh, elaborate on the key features and advantage of uh, the electrolyzer technology that enables green hydrogen production at significantly lower capex cost? Sure. Uh, so I think one of the first things to understand is that uh, India uh, produces around 5 million tons of uh, hydrogen. Uh, and the world produces around 100 million tons of hydrogen and all the hydrogen primarily comes from fossil fuel, uh, natural mm -hmm. gas, and there are two essential problems there. Uh, one is the import, which is basically the supply and the cost of natural gas, which is the fossil fuel. And the second is basically the billion tons of CO2 emission, which is involved in the whole hydrogen production. Now, essentially, uh, all the process of producing green hydrogen, which is an alternative mm -hmm. to the fossil fuel hydrogen, uh, electrolyzer is one of the most promising technology. Uh, and which is uh, kind of breaking down water into its constituent molecules of oxygen and hydrogen mm -hmm. uh, using renewable electricity. Uh, now, what we essentially do is uh, we look into the whole process of splitting water into its constituent from the first principles mm -hmm. uh, and design stacks which uh, does not use any rare earth metal, does not use any critical component, mm -hmm. yet splits water efficiently uh, into oxygen and hydrogen and separates the gases into the stack itself. And all of this is uh, done in a very uh, modular uh, and differentiated process in, in such a way that we do not have to rely on import of uh, any uh, critical component uh, or rare earth metal. That's, that's great, sir. I mean, uh, people like you are actually lifting up uh, the green hydrogen sector in India. And with this, I, I want to know um, how has market responded to new traces, uh, modular and scalable electrolyzer system and what specific application or industries have shown, you know, most interest in adopting your technology? Right. Uh, so as I said, primarily uh, all the technology which is available in the Indian also and global market uh, mm -hmm. are, fo are focused on uh, electrolyzers which are primarily coming from US and Europe. Uh, and these are very expensive machines, right? So the mm -hmm. as in, uh, cost of producing the green hydrogen uh, is very high, but uh, the customer in, at the end did not have a lot of choice because there is no uh, alternative technology which is available. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are one of the four uh, companies in the world that has embarked on the path of uh, creating a differentiated technology, solving for uh, the scalability and the 
cost of producing green hydrogen uh, without uh, complicating the technology too much. Uh, mm -hmm. So the market has been uh, very uh, receptive of the technology development that we are doing. Uh, the important thing to understand here is that we are building up the technology from ground up, uh, from very first principle, small proof of concept to scale up larger system within a two years, which is a very fast time in the whole product development journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are working with uh, leading, uh, let's say we are working with uh, sectors which are currently using a lot of fossil fuel and under a lot of pressure to replace that fossil fuel hydrogen with green hydrogen. Right. So we have found uh, a lot of early support from uh, oil and gas company, public sector uh, refineries, uh, who are looking at avenues to decarbonize their processes and also make sure that they stay relevant over the course of the next uh, many decades. Uh, and also, uh, there is a lot of interest from the upcoming sectors like long haul mobility, you know, for the trucks, mm -hmm. buses, ships, exactly. planes, which are not using hydrogen but using some mm -hmm. kind of fossil fuel or. Coal, uh, and we are seeing a lot of uh, interest there as well because they are looking at different avenues and fuel to run their processes. So overall, mm -hmm. the reception has been great for us. Uh, uh, obviously, it's a uh, the scale that the industry wants. Uh, that's very challenging to kind of create overnight. And uh, we have found uh, some of the early supporters who understand that uh, that numbers and the volumes of the uh, product that we make will scale up as we uh, kind of go forward in our journey. Uh, that's that's great to know, sir. And as a startup, you must have faced a lot of difficulties during the initial years of your, you know, establishment of new trades. And um, so I want to know what challenges have you encountered during the development and commercialization of the technology that you're using, the electrolyzer technology, and how have you addressed these challenges? Right. Uh, so to be very honest, it's never easy for... Uh deep right. tech climate tech startup to start in India, right? In, in India, we primarily focus on consumer facing uh, or SaaS kind of startups mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the the path to revenue is much shorter and much probably faster, right? Yeah. Uh, so when we started off, uh, obviously uh, there were a lot of challenges in terms of, uh, because you're not just trying to make a, a platform on a website or something like that, right? You're trying mm -hmm. to make a hardware product which takes a lot of space and needs a lot of capital even to build the first proof of concept or pilot. Uh, so in the beginning, uh, we found a lot of challenges in terms of accessing the resources and uh, uh, the, uh, the funds to kind of build up the first prototype. Uh, and we found uh, some support uh, in IIT Madras uh, from Professor Satya Chakravarti. We also uh, mm -hmm. found some early investors like Speciali and uh, Misselio Fund, who kind of believed in our uh, early dreams. We did not have a lot of proof points, but we kind of had a path and small prototype to, that we demonstrated. Uh, and they really believed in uh, the passion, the vision that we had uh, mm -hmm. and kind of backed us to scale uh, scale our technology up. Uh, mm -hmm. The other challenge I think in the Indian ecosystem is that the talent pool for building cutting edge technology. Uh, mm -hmm. In India, we have not been uh, focusing and investing enough on cutting edge technology. And as a result, the talent pool is also very scarce, right? They move out to other avenues uh, globally. Uh, mm -hmm. So that that is also very, uh, very, very difficult to uh, find an access to. Uh, to kind of uh, work around that, we have started. We started looking at talent pool who are working on subsidiary industries who, who currently are not probably looking at hydrogen or electrolyzer, but mm -hmm. doing something else uh, in other sector, building cutting edge technology, mm -hmm. uh, and also people in academia who are, who primarily thought that they will spend a lot of their career in research and development in academia uh, mm -hmm. just to publish papers. We found that pool and we kind of gave them an avenue to come and. Uh, express themselves and kind of build up the technology here. And I think uh, that has been a very, very key uh, reason for uh, the limited success that we have until now. Well, uh, I think uh, that your uh, startup is not just limited to, you know, green hydrogen and it, it is doing so much. So with this, um, Mr. Sarkar, can you share any success stories of how your product have, you know, has been deployed in uh, practical application and their impact on achieving sustainable energy goals? Sure. Uh, so uh, we kind of, we are the technology company which develops this product, which are the technology uh, uh, infrastructure for all leading uh, industrial uh, units, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we are working with one leading uh, refi refinery in order to provide them electrolyzers with which they can produce the hydrogen for their uh, uh, processing of the crude oil. Mm -hmm. uh, they are currently relying on uh, natural gas to make the hydrogen, uh, which is mm -hmm. responsible for tons of CO2 emission and right now what they're trying to do is trying to decarbonize the entire uh, hydrogen production so that they have no CO2 emission in the mm -hmm. whole uh, hydrogen production. 
Uh, we are also currently working on another project where we are deploying our electrolyzer with fuel cell, uh, okay. kind of showing the entire integration in terms of production of hydrogen storage and uh, producing electricity uh, from the fuel cell. And the idea is basically that it has application in uh, long haul mobility. It okay. has application in staying power uh, backup for data centers, telecom towers. It is also application in uh, generating and storing powers uh, which are off grid at stage uh, at remote locations uh, for mm -hmm. defense and uh, space research. Uh, so we have really found uh, early believers in our uh, technology and vision uh, who have adopted uh, the technology and who have given us the support uh, mm -hmm. in order to uh, accept the product that we are uh, providing. All right, sir. Um... So my next question would be, uh, what is your vision uh, for the future of new trace uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, global green hydrogen market? And how do you uh, plan to stay ahead, you know, in this uh, rapidly evolving market? Right. So as I said, uh, most of the technology development and the technology uh, manufacturing of uh, electrolyzers for green hydrogen is mm -hmm. uh, located in Europe and US, right? Uh, and we are competing with uh, a lot of different companies who have a lot of capital reserves. Exactly, but I think the, the major differentiation for us has been the speed at which the team has uh, executed uh, the visions. The execution is the key that we have. Uh, the speed uh, is, again, uh, very important for us in order to scale up and demonstrate and prove our technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we have managed to build up the entire core technology in-house with all indigenous products, which means that our dependence on any rare earth metal or any broken down supply chain is very limited. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, obviously certain part of our instrumentation supply chain is still uh, imported from uh, global vendors, but we are also working with uh, local vendors. And this is a very important work that we are doing. We are kind mm -hmm. of uh, developing a vendor ecosystem for uh, green hydrogen, uh, exactly. which is going to be beneficial for uh, the entire, uh, entire sector, not just us. Mm -hmm. uh, so we spend a lot of, uh, a lot of time on working with uh, vendors who probably are not uh, at that level right now, but we help them in understanding the requirements uh, to be at the top and uh, they kind of uh, work with us in order to upgrade their processes and product uh, to reach there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that, that, that I think will have a long term benefit in terms of the product that we are building. Uh, we are building in India the product, but we are building it for the world. So we are aiming for global deployments uh, in, the diff in different markets so that our product are continuously evaluated against the best in the world uh, mm -hmm. and kind of are uh, competing for market space with uh, all leading uh, technology providers right now. That's, that's great, sir. I, I'm sure that, uh, I mean, within a short span of time, New Trace is achieving so much and is creating a good base for this sector already. So... I'm sure you must have had suggestions for the government right now. So what what advice would you give to the policymaker to further uplift this sector? Right. Uh, I mean, as a leading startup in the space, I think we have mm -hmm. few recommendations primarily uh, to the policymakers. Obviously, most of the policies and discussions always happen at the larger scale. Uh, exactly. But uh, I think one of the important things to uh, always keep in mind that the the destination to the larger scale will pass through small scale deployments and uh, demonstration. Uh, okay. And uh, most of the policies that have come up from the policymakers have been focused on uh, large scale production of mm -hmm. green hydrogen. But we, we do not have the infrastructure right now to do that. So I think uh, that there, there has to be a very uh, focused effort on uh, leveraging the startups and the technology that are coming up. They might mm -hmm. not be at their 100% uh, of proven capabilities right now, mm -hmm. uh, but they're close and there is a need for the policymakers to support indigenous uh, capable technologies and uh, allow them to grow uh, through mm -hmm. multiple iterations. So when we are making a policy, uh, it's uh, definitely uh, fair to uh, kind of create an environment for large scale uh, production and deployment, but it's also important that uh, smaller startups have an equitable uh, access to some of the benefits of the policies. Exactly, sir. and. Uh... I think that uh, government would, you know, take your suggestions and work on the upliftment of the sector. So nice. that's all for today, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Sakar, for joining us. And I'm sure that, uh, first of all, I want to tell you that this is our first episode where we talked about green hydrogen. And uh, nice. 
it was amazing chatting with you sir i have uh, i've got to know so much about you know the sector as well as uh, what should be done to further uplift the sector and uh, so that's for today thank you for joining us sir and for our audience uh, if you want to learn more on green energy and more on clean energy so uh, listen to and and to listen to inspiring stories such as of mr sarkar hit the subscribe button and till then keep supporting sustainability